gracious Lord, love, grace, and compassion flow from you to us perpetually, and we praise you for sustaining us. You who cradled us in the wombs of the woman we call mother, we bless you for choosing them for us. And yet, God, you've assured us that even if our mothers forsake us, you will not. So we thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God's words are inexhaustible. The lessons he brings to us are timeless. And for this month, we ask him to impart lessons of mothers in the scriptures to our lives so we can be better equipped to show his glory. Today, God reminds us that we're meant to be productive, meant to share and give life. It is our destiny. Today's devotion is Eve, the destined warrior mother. Our verse of meditation is Genesis 4 verse 20. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all living things. The term mother hen is used to refer to someone who is overly protective. And this is because the mother hen is truly a fierce protector. Once a hen becomes a mother, her instincts change from personal survival to the protection of her chicks. She will fight any and every predator that comes near her babies, and she often uses her body as a shield for them. From early, she teaches her young the alarm calls so they can sense danger. The hen becomes fierce even before the eggs hatch, and will guard the very spot where she's brooding just as she does the young chicks. Mother Hen makes a decision to fight for the life of her babies even before they hatch. So it was with Eve, the mother of creation, who accepted that she was destined to be at war with the enemy. Eve's entrance into the world of motherhood was painful because, among other things, she was entering into a universally unknown realm of pain. Pain was not a concept that Adam and Eve could relate to before they disobeyed the Lord. Then came the tragedy of their rebellion. As the Lord God cursed the serpent, a promise was made that included a challenge particularly for the woman. Genesis 3 verse 15 reads, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offsprings and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Eve stood right there as God declared war between she and the devil. It was this war that would make right the wrong that she and Adam had committed. It was this war that would reinstate the happy Eden home that they were now forced to leave. It was a solid promise, but she had to be up to the task. God then turned to Eve and declared, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe with painful labor, you will give birth to children. So now she knew, in order to have the seed that would crush the head of the serpent, there would be pain, severe pain, says the scripture. However, the promise to destroy the enemy was more than enough to excite and motivate her to take this journey into motherhood. Coupled with the pronouncement of pain was a promise of redemption and restoration. After God spoke and before leaving Eden, Adam confirmed that he believed the words of God and in the ability of his wife to fulfill the God-given mission. And so verse 20 says, Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all living things. 
the pronouncement over Eve was bold and daring. It was not just to be an incubator for new life, it was to become the chief strategist for destroying Satan's kingdom. God placed a major responsibility on her, but it is a pronouncement that still rings true to this day. God says there is a natural enmity between the mother and the devil. The word enmity in Hebrew is aiba and is literally translated hatred or hostility. This hatred could make her feel scared and intimidated, but she must proclaim the promise of God to give her victory over this formidable foe. In the literal sense, the woman was to give birth to the Messiah who condescended to be a baby so he could destroy the enemy and retake what had been stolen. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. In the continuous spiritual sense, the woman bears in her very being the God-given role to be at war with the enemy. He will not and does not like her, and she would never like him. Every one of us, men, women, and children as members of God's church, the church that is described in scriptures as the bride, the woman, we are all cast in the same role of destroyer of Satan's kingdom. We are called to a new birth and to nurture new births that usher in the second coming of Christ. She, the woman, and she, the church, must hold to the promise and power that God has given her to totally disrupt the enemy's camp. Her victory over him would come through great trials and intense pain, but she would triumph. Along with the warrior role, she has the creative destiny to design, develop, and bring forth instruments of mass destruction to annihilate Satan's kingdom. She is that destined warrior mother standing on God's promises. You are meant to be at war with Satan. It is the legacy from Eve, the destined warrior mother of all creation. If that is not happening, you are dressed in the wrong uniform and standing with the wrong battalion. Just as the hen made her decision to be a mother, knowing that she would have to fight for her chicks, God made the decision before the foundation of the world to send his son into a world that would reject and crucify him. And Eve accepted unknown pain to be the mother who would facilitate the Messiah's entry into the world as human just so she could see the destruction of Satan's kingdom. How about you? Are you willing to endure your pain for the sake of the gospel, for the opportunity to destroy Satan's kingdom? Are you willing to take your place in the army of Christ knowing that God has imbued you with the power to destroy the enemy in all spheres of your life? It is up to you to decide. Will you be true to your mother Eve? Or will you shirk from the responsibility and allow the enemy to triumph? I pray that your decision will be I will stand with Christ. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And we say, Amen and Amen.